So, a human head has been found floating in a dam in Kayambu County and the police believe it belongs to that of the late Rita Muendo. For those of you who don't remember, we covered this story last week of a 20-year-old girl that was lured into an Airbnb by a guy she met on Instagram in Nairobi, Kenya around the 14th of January 2024. Her lifeless body was found in the dustbin around the building where the Airbnb was located. But her head, they said, was missing. It was believed her killer, who was pictured here, caught in the CCTV footage, cut her head off and took it away. And in our previous video, we were contemplating as to why she was beheaded, especially given the amount of time in which she was abducted, kidnapped, lured, anyone you want to put it, and to the time she was killed. So a lot of us assumed it was for money rituals. Some people assumed it just so that she would not be identified immediately. There was even an article that claimed the killer took her head off to sell it to ritualists. And that was why many people were suspecting or believing that the killer must have been Nigerian. We'll talk more about that in a moment. However, it's been announced that the human head was seen floating in a community in Kayambu County, one hour away from where this incident happened, from where she was killed, away from Nairobi. And when residents or people around the vicinity saw this human head floating, they informed the police and the police came and they picked up the head, believing that the head belonged to the late Rita Mueno. They are suggesting the killer may have thrown it somewhere or anywhere where this um, dam was linked and the head probably floated this way or was moved this way by the water. And the fact that a severed head had been found is now kind of making the story a little bit complicated because clearly the killer obviously did not use the head for anything unless he did and they were done with it. I usually don't know how ritualists do their thing what they do to the body part after they are done with it. It's not like they eat it but I will assume if they are using it for money ritual, they would have to bury it somewhere. But given that the head has floated into the river, I want to believe that the killer threw it there because, you know, his main purpose of killing uh, Rita was so that she would not be identified immediately. That way, he would have enough time to run. That way, they could not pin it to him instantly. That's pretty much one of the reasons why a lot of people, you know, disfigure the deceased body after they have killed the person. It's just unfortunate that this girl met this stranger on Instagram and she just had to lose her life this way. Now, remember, like I said, when this news first broke out, many people suspected the killer pictured here to be a Nigerian, given how sneaky he probably is. It's not as if anybody can't be sneaky, but suspiciously, maybe because of the nature in which Rita was killed in a ritual manner. So, however, the police have, uh, the Kenyan police have concluded or they have suggested that the killer might be Kenyan because he spoke swily to the people around, the people who remembered him. Remember that when he was paying for the Airbnb, he did not pay with a transfer or with an ATM card. He claimed he didn't have those. He paid in cash and went to meet a group of people at the, at the store here close to the Airbnb where he paid in cash to collect the key and that was when they gave him the receipt to the key to the hotel or something so when he was communicating with them he used swahili and i guess because of that they are believing he would most likely be kenyan because i don't know many nigerians that speak swahili maybe the ones that grew up there another update is about the suspect that were arrested. In our previous video, we talked about a group of people that were arrested, believing to be one of the killers. And we all assumed it's this middleman because he's a light-skinned guy and looked like the guy in the CCTV footage. It turns out that the police released them because they don't actually fit the description, which means that the police have still not found their killer or any suspects at all, because the ones that they are initially arrested have all been cleared. So right now, the Kenyan police are still looking for their killer. They are still looking for this man. The thing is, um, the Airbnb did not have a CCTV footage. So this CCTV footage was from the shop he went to pay the Airbnb fee, the, the, the fee for the Airbnb. Where, and that's the only CCTV footage they have of him. He's wearing a cap and he's wearing sunglasses and his profile is showing. Frankly speaking, this is enough to catch him. This is enough to get him. Imagine if there was no CCTV footage, how would they have gotten him? This for me is enough to find. I feel like somebody should know him right now. I feel like people who know him in person can see this picture and call him out. He's a grown ass man. I'm sure he has met over 
1,000 people in his lifetime who might know him. So why hasn't anyone been able to recognize him? Say his full name. Remember one of the um, people at the Airbnb, one of the neighbors there claimed he knows the killer and he used to distribute cars for him. He has done business. I don't know if he did know who the killer was. He should have given them a name. Simple as that. A name and an address or something. You knowing the killer is enough details to help find him. But up till now, we don't know what the police know. They released all the suspects initially. So the killer is still at large. Another thing that is confusing the investigation is the fact that they don't know the purpose. This was something we were worried about. They don't know why this man did this to Rita. Now, just for a little clarity on the story, Rita, who is 20 years old, met this strange guy on Instagram who was chatting him up. So they were chatting, they were vibing. Rita did not want to meet him. But the man kept pushing, he kept being nice, he kept being sweet, tried to lure the girl, even told the girl that he was traveling. I don't know what it was, but clearly Rita was lured somehow, some way. Some people are suggesting he promised her to promise to give her money because from the chat, according to the police, Rita did not show any much interest until probably something was said. So when Rita went to meet the man, obviously the man had booked the Airbnb ahead of time knowing she was coming. And um, when Rita went there, it, she was given something to drink and that was it. Another detail we are also getting was that the killer sent a picture with Rita's phone to Rita's parents demanding 500,000 Kenyan shillings and that was when they first started getting the demand and that's when they knew that this guy has kidnapped her and is demanding money so afterwards he sent another picture of him trying to cut Rita's head and that was when the, the parents of Rita quickly ran to the police however the next day Rita has already, had already been killed the parents said he did not give them details on where to bring the money. He did not give them details on how to give them, uh, how he's going to retrieve the money. He did not give them details, send account number. Like, you're demanding money, but you're not giving the family a way for them to come and pay you. Which to me makes it seem like this is not a kidnapper. This is not, he didn't kidnap this girl for ransom because it doesn't state that Rita came from a wealthy home. So it's confusing to me that he is making it look like he's trying to kidnap this girl for ransom but yet he's not giving avenue or following up with the parents on how they will bring the money or how they will pay which is very suspicious which meant or oh, in my own interpretation this guy had no care for the ransom and even within barely eight hours of meeting this girl he had already killed her he had already beheaded her and ran away with her head which meant he never came there to collect any ransom now it's not clear if he sexually assaulted her or if he forced himself on her but according to the neighbors around the airbnb they didn't hear scream or noise so they assumed she was drugged at the time she was decapitated so what was the purpose why was he doing this when he took the girl's head we basically assumed it's money rituals but now we're seeing the head floating in a dam, still intact in a way that they could recognize her, which meant he never did anything with the human head. So why did he kill this girl? Are we dealing with a ritualist or are we dealing with a serial killer? Remember, this was barely two weeks after that Instagram model was killed in an Airbnb too, where she was lured by a man she met on Instagram still, still in Kenya, and she was stabbed multiple times because the man tried to rob her. It's so ironic, but the difference is for Starlet Wahoo story, this girl here was the one that was first announced killed at her Airbnb in Kenya. Two weeks later, we heard about the um, 20 year old Moeno. Now the difference is, like I said, Starlet appeared rich on social media, which easily could make her a target. She was an Instagram influencer. She had a flashy lifestyle. <clears throat> her pictures are all showing luxury and class. I can understand why a guy on Instagram or a criminal on Instagram would want to target her because the guy who killed her gave her money, was spoiling her with gifts. So she pretty much assumed this guy, I mean, the last thing in her mind would be this guy wants to steal from me when he's the one sending you money. Only for them to end up in the Airbnb, she got stabbed multiple times and lost her life from there. The guy was caught and it found out that the guy was fond of stealing from girls like that but he had no history of killing them. Now, when it comes to Rita Moeno, this girl was, she's, she's a 20 year old girl. She's not active on social media. 
she only has two pictures, a bit three, of her circulating. There's nothing about her that is showing that she has money. There's nothing about her that is showing flashy that would make her a target. So why did the killer go after her? Kept persuading her to come. What, what is, was his intention? I mean, it could be one or two things. Maybe he wanted to sexually assault her. Okay, we can agree to that. But did that happen? The police have not said so and we don't think that happened. Now, stealing from her or trying to get her parents to bring a huge amount of money, we can understand that. But at the same time, I don't think if he was going for somebody whose parents would pay 500,000 Kenyan shillings, he would go for a random girl who doesn't show off well, per se. I wouldn't assume that. Now we're thinking it's money rituals, but he didn't do anything with the human head. He didn't take any other part of her body, just the head. And we found the head now. So why did he kill this girl? Why? If he's claiming that he wanted money from her and to get ransom from the parents, why didn't he follow through? Why did he not literally show or give the parents a way they could pay the money? You just sent, oh, your daughter is going to die. We need this amount of money. How would they pay it? Where would they send it to? Where is, are, are they going? It's just confusing as to the reason why Rita was killed the way she was. So I don't know why the killer did what he did. My guess is he probably wanted it quickly and when the money did not come, he had to kill her and move on to another victim, most likely. And or maybe, you know, most times when these killers have something planned in their mind and it ends up the, not looking the way they want it to go, so they just quickly rush and get it over with. Because ordinarily, if he really wanted a ransom, you have to wait a day or two or three or four, like literally natural or normal kidnappers give their victims, the family of the victims, amount of time, details on how to retrieve the money. This one had nothing. He just called the girl, drugged her, demanded money from the parents, few hours later, kills her, cut her head off. After he had even gone, demanded money from the parents too. On that thing again, okay, I forgot to mention this. Aside her head, her mobile phone was also found, properties belonging to her was also found. So, which means he threw everything here. He didn't even take the phone. So clearly, it's all just a waste in my opinion. It's just clear that this guy, best guess, given from everything we've seen, is a serial killer. So my Kenyan people, you guys have a serial killer on the loose. There is a man out there going around killing people for no good reason. And he has to be found. If he's still in the country, he needs to be found immediately because it's just a matter of time before someone else falls victim. And given how this is all going, he would most likely not use a Airbnb again. He would most likely come up with a new trick because this guy was very sneaky. Used a fake phone that was registered in a woman's name. Used a fake name. He is a con artist. This is a criminal right here. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to do it. And for him to behead somebody, bring out a saw. That means he had a saw in this bag here. He had it all planned out. He knows what he was coming to do in that Airbnb the moment he went there. It was not something that was an instinct thing. Not something that was inst in instinctual. Is that a word? Not something that just came to him in that moment. This was something he had pre-planned. This was something he had mapped out that this was what he was going to do. If and if and if not, if not. Whatever his uh, expectations were. So we just have to see how this story develops. Because... I just feel like this girl was just an innocent victim caught up in something. There's something. There's there gotta be a reason why. The police are even now asking the girl's family if there is anybody that they know would want to kill her. Maybe an ex-boyfriend. Maybe the family has offended someone. They are trying to find a, a, a real motive as to why she was killed. Because right now the police realize that there is no reasonable motive why she would have been killed. The only money ritual one that they've had in mind, well, that didn't happen because her head has been found. So they are trying to see if there is a family feud or if there is something that would make her a target. And I don't know if that's with the right angle to look, given how she was killed and given that their conversation did not look like they know each other before. So let's just see how it goes. At the meantime, you guys can give me your thoughts, give me your opinions on why you think Rita was killed. And if you ever think the killer would probably ever be found, I kind of still believe the person is still in Kenya. I feel so. I believe so. It's also possible that the person is not. And given how foreign looking the person is, I won't be surprised if the person has also traveled. 
But let's just see how it goes. My own fear is that he is still on the loose. He is still out there. And I don't think he's going to stop at Rita. I don't think so. Which means someone somewhere is about to fall victim to this con artist again. Doesn't stop him from creating another Instagram account. I, I, that's what I feel. And I fear who the next victim is going to be. I really hope a lot of people are alert. I really hope a lot of Kenyans are alert because there's a killer on the loose.